Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. So last week we read in John 4, 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And that's the message today. Spirit is obviously the Holy Spirit who guides and directs us. And truth is the Word of God. That is the truth. And so I'm going to give you two examples of how the Spirit can lead us and direct us to make the right decisions and how the Word of God can lead us and direct us how to grow in Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. So, if you have your Bibles today, turn to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30. And before I read that passage, I want to set the stage. David has already killed Goliath and he is looked up as a warrior. Saul makes him ruler over the, the warriors, over the soldiers, over all the men of war. But at some point, Saul gets very jealous of David. Um, he comes back from war and... The women are singing and dancing for Saul, but they say the words, Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousand. Whoa. Well, now Saul is jealous of David and he says, what more can David do but take my kingdom? And so David knows that his life's in danger, and so he flees. And he has 600 men that follow him, warriors. I'm going to start reading in chapter 30, verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone. But they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And they were so distraught that they even wanted to stone David. They were thinking about stoning David. And this is what David does. Reading verse 8. So David acquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Now, what stands out to me here or at least one thing, is this is David. David went up against Goliath, who stood over nine feet tall, and he killed him, cut his head off. Then he's a warrior. I just read to you what he did, right? And now his family has been taken, his village has been burned, his, his countrymen that are with him want to stone him. You would think David would just jump on the horse and say, let's roll. Let's capture our lost and kill everyone that's there. 
but he doesn't. No. He does what you and I need to do. Take it to the Lord. Pray in supplication. Listen to the Spirit of God for the answer that you need, no matter what it is. And then praise Him for the answer, whatever it is. Amen? Amen. You see, the Spirit of God would fall upon men in the Old Testament when needed. They didn't have it 24-7 like you and I do if you're saved today. You believe that Jesus came incarnated in human form to die for the sins of the world, the ones who accept him and was buried and rose on the third day and have repented of their sinful ways and have been filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't have it like you and I do, where we can pray to the Lord all day long. We can have Jesus on our mind all day long, and he's helping us. Praise God. Praise Yeshua. Amen? Amen. But the word says that when Samuel anoints David by the instructions of God to be the new king of Israel, that the spirit of the Lord is comes upon him from that day forward. And so this is how he is able to pray in supplication earnestly about this important thing. And God gives him that answer. And so when you get close to the Lord and you start praying in supplication and fasting, taking communion and walking with Jesus, and you will grow closer and closer. The Holy Ghost has power over sin. And the Holy Spirit will help you conquer sin by simply rebuking the devil in Jesus' name when he will comes to you and tries to tempt you and he will flee. You cannot stand the name Jesus. Do you understand? So there's power there. Power in the Holy Spirit. Use it. Amen? Amen. So now... What happens here is, obviously, David goes, he recovers everything, all the women and children that were taken, and he kills everybody there. And then he takes all their goods. Because God is with David, and he is with you. If you're saved today, amen? Amen. So feel powerful. Feel that power that's inside of you. But don't do anything unless you know God wants you to do it. All right? All right, so now let's go to the gospel, the New Testament. The New Testament is the gospel. The whole book is the truth. And the first four books are the gospel of Jesus. And so now we're going to the gospel of Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 22. And here Jesus is instructing his disciples, reading verse 36. Then he said to them, But now, he who has a money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Now remember, we need to follow the Spirit and the Word of God to grow in grace with Jesus and to do the right thing. And here he's telling the disciples to buy a sword if you don't have one. What he's telling you, brothers and sisters, through the Word of God, is you are to protect your family, your home, yourself. You're not going to let somebody break into your house and rape your wife. No, you take that gun that you have bought and you take that person out. You're not going to let that happen. And God does not want you to let that happen. And that's what he's saying here. Protect your family, your loved ones. 